Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be adding infinitely many imaginary numbers or powers of imaginary numbers. But we're going to add this infinite series in an interesting way because notice that these are not just powers of i but they're powers of i divided by the powers. So we have i to the first power divided by 1 which you don't see, then i to the second power divided by 2, i to the third divided by 3, i to the fourth divided by 4, so on and so forth. With i, we've done some finite sums before, but this time we're going to take it to another level and do an infinite sum. Okay? Great. Let's see how we can find the sum. I'm also going to show you some results from Wolfram Alpha. Do you think Wolfram Alpha can evaluate this sum? So if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made nine videos on basics of complex numbers, where you can find the basic definition and lots of lots of problems on my channel. So to find a sum like this, I mean, you can't make a common denominator, right? Because there are infinitely many terms. Is this geometric? No, not really. Uh, is this like e to the power something? Well, that kind of looks like it. If you remember uh, the Taylor series for e to the power x, it's 1 plus x plus x squared divided by 2 factorial, x cubed divided by 3 factorial. Yes, it's kind of similar, but those are factorials. But here we have the numbers themselves. So how do you express the sum? We're going to use some interesting tools. Um, we can probably call one of those tools calculus. All right, where does this come from? First of all, let's go ahead and turn this sum into something variable. Now, lots of times we do replace variables with constants or to evaluate them with numbers, but this time we're going to do the opposite, right? And by the way, I'm about to show you what Wolfram Alpha offers first hand. Should we look at it first and then I'll tell you the variable stuff. Okay, here we go. Ta -da, da da unable to determine the general term. You can blame my um, prompt if you want. You know, <laughs> when I gave it from alpha this, it was unable to determine the general term. And I, I mean, that's okay because it's just artificial intelligence or just, what is it called? Large language model. It's not a human being, obviously, right? So anyways, so let's go ahead and see how we can Variable life, variableize this. I don't know if that's the right term, but okay, here's what I mean. We have i plus i squared divided by 2, i cubed divided by 3, which make it normal, and i to the fourth divided by 4, so on and so forth. Again, this is an infinite sum. I keep emphasizing it, okay? What would happen if this was a finite sum? That's a different story. Probably wouldn't be this easy, right? So if you replace i with x, you get something like this. You could also use z. I think for the purposes of this channel, I believe z is going to be a better choice. So let's go ahead and do that. z plus z squared divided by 2 plus z cubed divided by 3 plus z to the fourth divided by 4. So on and so forth. Now you might be thinking, what does this have to do with our problem? Well, if I can find the sum of this in terms of z, then I can go ahead and at the end, I'll have a function of z, right? A complex function. And then I can just replace z with i. That step would be a piece of cake. That's why we need to use a variable to find this in the general sense. Make sense? And uh, sometimes generalizing a problem, it makes it easier. Sometimes it makes it harder. So in this case, you're looking at each term. First, look at each term separately. What does this remind you? Take a good look, okay? For example, z. Okay, so what? It is not special. z squared divided by 2. When do we ha divide anything exponential by the same exponent? If you said power rule with integrals, you got it. In other words, z squared over 2 is the integral of z dz, isn't it? I mean, think about it. In the indeterminate uh, form, we have a constant, but in this case, we don't. So that's fine. Don't worry, we'll take care of that. But notice that z squared over 2 is the integral of z. And similarly, z cubed over 3, 
would be the integral of z squared. You see that? In general, the power rule says if you have z to the power n dz, it's going to become when you integrate z to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, and then, of course, there's going to be a constant. If it's indeterminate, if it's said, it, is that called indeterminate or indefinite? Indefinite, sorry, not indeterminate. It's an indefinite integral. If it's a definite integral, we're going to have uh, limits. So in this case, uh, that's the case. So uh, these are my powers. So we can go ahead and do this. And to get that, you can basically differentiate each of these. For example, looking at it from another angle from the opposite side. If you don't see this, you can go ahead and differentiate. Like, why would you differentiate this, right? Well, why not? If you differentiate z, you're gonna get one. If you differentiate z squared over two, you're gonna get two z divided by two, and then three z squared divided by three, and then four z cubed divided by four, and so on and so forth. Uh-oh, this is gonna give us a nice sum, which is known as geometric, right? You know what that means? If the derivative of this expression is this one, then I can find this expression by integrating this one. Make sense? In other words, in other words, z plus z squared over 2 plus z cubed over 3 dot 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 is the integral of 1 plus z plus z squared dot 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 dz. Of course, our integrand, integrand is also going to be an infinite sum. Great. But what about replacing z with i? Is when this comes in handy. We're going to determine our limits, the lower limit as 0 and the upper limit as i, and you'll see why this is helpful. Okay? But first of all, let's try to focus on this. Like, how do you integrate something like this? Of course, if you integrate term by term, you're going to get this, which is not helpful because that's going to bring us back to square one. So we need to find a genius, clever way to simplify this. And geometric series helps you out. Since this is an infinite geometric series, we can write this as 1 over 1 minus z. Of course, z needs to be on a certain interval in order for that to converge and so on and so forth. We'll take a look at those later. But that's what it is. Now we have the following integral. 0 to i dz over 1 minus c. And as you know, this is the natural log when you integrate it. If you integrate it dz over z, that will be ln z, but there's a minus z, which is from the chain rule, is going to bring a minus sign, ln with a 1 minus z. Absolute value is used, so we avoid something negative, but guess what? We're going to be dealing with a complex logarithm here, which makes it more fun. So in order to avoid the comp uh, complexities or complications, I would put the minus sign outside and then just write this as ln absolute value of 1 minus i minus ln absolute value of 1 minus 0. Uh-oh, this is where the 1 comes in handy. Look, 1 minus 0 is 1, ln 1 is 0. Yay, we end up with something like this. So in other words, our sum, which is i plus i squared over 2 plus i cubed over 3, dot, 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 is equal to negative ln 1 minus i. What happened to the constant? This is a definite integral, so we don't have a constant. Make sense? Beautiful. But is that the answer? Yes. How do you write the answer, though? Well, you can kind of do the following. I don't think we're going to need an absolute value because 1 minus i is neither negative nor positive, so I'm just going to leave it like that. But to find the natural log of a complex number, you can do the following. First, find the ln of the modulus, which is root 2, and then plus i times the argument, but argument is negative pi over 4. Have you noticed that? Our number is going to be here. So it's negative pi over 4 minus i times pi over 4. And if you kind of expand this, negative ln root 2 plus i times pi over 4. You can also turn this into one half of ln2, so on and so forth, but that's not super duper necessary. And yes, this infinite sum is a complex number. Let's go ahead and take a look at Wolfram Alpha. One more time, I wanted to give Wolfram Alpha a second chance, and this time it was able to find this infinite sum. As negative ln log means ln in the Wolfram Alpha world, negative ln 
1 minus i, which is a complex number like this. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.